The big release, though, uh, this weekend, which was released on Thursday in order to make a little extra money, and it worked. <laughs> uh, Sex in the City 2, The Sands of Time. Um, uh, Matt, uh, <laughs> like it matters. Uh, what's Sex in the City 2 about? This is good, because uh, you haven't seen the show or the first, or the first movie. movie. All right, so what's Sex movie. in the City 2 uh, about? Sex in the City is about a bunch of girls who go to <laughs> Abu Dhabi and learn parkour. <laughs> I, no, That'd actually, so much that would have been a lot better. Parkour. No, this is this this is the continuing story of Carrie and her friends Samantha and Charlotte and Come on. Miranda. All I almost right. said Natalie. Uh, mm -hmm. They're dealing with their married lives and or mostly married lives. Samantha is of course not married because she's a cougar and will never get married. Uh, they are out having fun and trying to deal with how their lives have changed. And as Carrie is dealing with. Pro if not problems, at least tension and unexpected things in her marriage to Mr. Big, her love of her life. Mr. Big. They at he least big. He's just big. big. Oh, just I thought big. it was. You Mr. can just big. call him Big. So, okay. What about Notorious? Is he notorious. <laughs> um, Samantha ends up getting a job and taking her friends on an all-expenses trip to Abu Dhabi, where they can shop and glam it away. And I probably have gone on too much. Let's watch the trailer. Nice work. Thank you. Nice work, mm -hmm. my friends. Me and you, just us two. And in two years, amazing things can happen. I made it. I never made it. Mommy, look. Really? They're driving me crazy. I've tricked my body into thinking it's younger. How are you going to swallow all those? Have we met? As for me, Big and I were somewhere between wild sex yeah. Yeah. and a baby. I don't know which is worse. Samantha. The baby will tire eventually. So, uh, that is, uh, that is uh, Sex uh, and the City uh, 2. You got a little glimpse of sort of what everybody is uh, going through uh, in the movie. Um, it is two years later after the first movie. Um, it's that set up right. It begins with a big wedding scene between the two uh, gay guys. You totally just gave that away. Yeah, but it's in the first, <laughs> literally, how the movie begins. Yes. Because I had, a, I had a, pr a big problem with that. I knew we were in trouble with that first scene because these girls are friends, all they do is talk, and in another trailer, which has been given away because I saw it on uh, Bravo during, Carrie Bra during Sarah Jessica Parker's appearance in the after show of The Real Housewives of New York City, which is awesome, um, and, um, uh, and they showed that, so I'm comfortable uh, talking about this, and Miranda, they're all buying a gift for that wedding, and, uh, and, and Miranda says, uh, how did these two get together anyway? I thought they hated each other, and I thought, uh-oh, because these girls are friends, these are mutual friends who are important to them, and the notion that they would be having that conversation in right before, in front of us, when they right. clearly would have talked about it 48 times in the mm -hmm. preceding two years, tells me that no effort was really put into this script or story, and what this was going to be about is what I feared it was going to be about, which was, you know, Gucci and Prada and Christian Louboutin and, and, and Abu Dhabi and the splendor and the over-the-top and the spending and not the story and more of developing the characters. Well, there's no script, but then there's also no restraint simultaneously because it's two and a half hours mm -hmm. long, and it's like a parody of what you think the Sex and the City sequel would be. Right. I mean, it's almost like they sat around in a room and said, okay, let's send the ladies to Abu Dhabi and let's stick them in outrageous costumes on camels in the middle of the desert and I, I Charlotte can look for her cell phone signal and... I and started thinking of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, in this movie. It's very and campy. I, and I don't think I was supposed to. No, it's, it's very I, campy. No, and then, I mean, the Liza Minnelli performing Single Ladies Put a Ring on It, like singing the song and doing the dance, the whole song. Later on, we have the girls in a karaoke bar doing I Am Woman. The whole song, not just one verse. Yeah. This is a great example of like, it's so overlong, it's so self-indulgent, it's never as clever or funny as it's trying to be. I hate all of them. <laughs> I really hate Carrie. I, really, I, really, really, I, I, I really. I only do. really hate one of them, and I actually still really like one of them. You like Charlotte. I still like Charlotte, and I think that uh, uh, that uh, that Kristen Davis's performances uh, get better. I mean, I think she's sort of grown into the character and understands the character. I don't mind Carrie. I don't mind Miranda. Miranda head in the wrong direction. Kim Cattrall, Samantha, that is, character has uh, become uh, nothing but a caricature. I mean, you saw it there in the clip. You know, how are you going to swallow those? Have we met? There is just 
one over the top I get it you're 52 years old you love to have sex with guys all the time you love oral sex you love every other kind of sex you think about it all the time you want to have it all the time everybody who doesn't have it all the time is a huge loser um, and I mean enough it's silly it ends up being you know I'm not a prude but it ends up being demeaning and you're like rolling your eyes you're like enough have, it's uncomfortable yeah, it's uncomfortable like have a, She's a, a little, cartoon character have a cartoon character have a little dignity yeah. at some point we got it I know but you're also supposed to be friends and, and she makes this huge sacrifice like yeah I'm not gonna go home with this guy I just met because we're having a girls night we're out we're soulmates oh, bravo we're so, yeah. I'll blow him later yeah, I'll blow him later. Exactly. Right. you're not a total bit <laughs> yeah yeah just so mostly. Uh, all right, so as somebody not familiar with these characters, I, except in, in sort of lore. Uh, you know, I will say that actually I started off okay in this movie. I actually felt like the movie did a decent job, and part of it was the opening montage, but it did a decent job of making sure I knew who these characters were. And I didn't mind the wedding scene. I actually thought that the, the Beyonce number was funny, and Aye. I think it all just went down. I mean, I thought it was kind of cute. It was too long. I want like, to tear my eyes out of my head. I, I, it was so painful to watch. I don't know. I thought, you know, like watching Liza do the dance, I'm like, Liza's a good sport. That's kind of funny. Okay. But then the movie just goes completely downhill. And it's, it, I, I don't want to get too much into my reaction to the characters because I find mostly them all loathsome and completely unbelievable. <laughs> um, you know, I, Carrie is probably the single most narcissistic character I've ever come across, mm -hmm. ever. Um, and you haven't one, you haven't seen the Real Housewives of New York. Uh, I guess not. I guess not. <laughs> they're not characters. They're real people. And, I know. <laughs> and there's literally it's and, the most narcissistic show in the history of the planet. And Charlotte, yeah. you know, has the moment where she's obviously can't handle her life with her kids, right? And they and they show that scene mm -hmm. where she's trying to cook, and you know, the older daughter puts the handprints right, we saw it there on her the behind, and she's like, "Oh, my vintage Valentino skirt." I'm like, "All right, I'm done." Right. <laughs> Who in their right mind, like, uh, like that's completely, right. and that was the kind of thing that really bothered me about this movie. Over and above, however much I would have not liked the characters, although I have to say, I actually found the only one that really is at all partially interesting is Samantha, and I thought, Really? Well, I, could, I felt like there was a core there that I thought, that might have been interesting in the show. It's over to the top here, but that may have it been was, interested in. It was more in the series. sufferable. When she was 10 years younger. And, and when she was 10 years younger. <laughs> and <laughs> there, was was, there were other parts to her character. She was driven by her career and didn't want to be beholden to a man. Now it seems like all she wants to do is have sex with a guy. Before, there was some sort of, you know, the show's supposed to be sort of about independence and female, sexual independence and female empowerment. Uh, that's all lost because all they care about is spending a ton of money on clothes. And, and, and that's really poorly timed right now. The uh, yeah. excess clangs massively. Well, right. and I felt like yeah, there were a I lot agree. of things yeah. that it started to go down roads that never got really, uh, you know, you started to get storylines or ideas that never really were properly addressed. That, you know, for instance, there's this tension between Big and Carrie about how they're marriage is going and you start to think okay maybe this isn't gonna go the expected way and then sure enough he does do the dumb guy thing oh look I got you this gift that you won't like because it's for me right but and it's not for yeah, him. Yeah that's that's right. And, he and I agree on this. Yeah. We talked about it afterward. It was a romantic gift although she didn't interpret it that way. She wanted a piece of jewelry because you know that's what Carrie right. needs one more right. piece of jewelry. Right because you don't have enough from this gazillionaire uh, boyfriend who you did tame and got to marry you, right. and, and by the way, is now being a great husband, and is doing something incredibly romantic and sweet, as it turns out. Right. And the she, intentions were there. And she yeah. can't, she can't, she's incapable of interpreting well, it that way. Because she's shallow. Is, is, and I, well, and I yes. felt like it was just completely unrealistic with its own characters, right? I mean, Natalie is presented as this career-driven... Miranda. Miranda, I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> Natalie, it's awesome. This is what I get for not watching the show. Miranda is presented as this woman who is so dedicated to her career that she doesn't have time to go and check out, you know, go and catch her son's important moments, like the science fair. Right. And then she gets fed up and leaves her job, which is, okay, that's kind of the right, right decision. And then she just, rather than worry about being unemployed in this economy, she just... Toddles off. Right. Well, the, none to of them, Dhabi. It's none just of them, completely. None of com them. None of them worry about the economy. There's never no, any it's concern. Fantasy land. Right. right. I mean, this is more. This is. I actually found this to be more fantastical than Prince of Persia. And one of the great things about the show, or one of the things about the show that is totally lost for a little bit in this, in the first movie, and completely in the second movie, is that there was something real about the show. They were. 
they were for, I think it did matter. I think it did matter to women to see four uh, sort of grown up women who were not beholden to the men they were with. Yes, at some times they obviously they wanted to find love, they wanted to share their lives with someone, but at their core they believed in their own sort of friendship, they believed that they had the power to be independent. And then in this movie all of that is lost because all they care about is spending $750 on hats and shoes and what the next fashion is going to be and and I think that that all gets lost very quickly. We got to wrap it up. There were two authentic scenes in the movie, although you may have been annoyed by her wearing that with her kids when she steps into the closet and cries. That felt like the kind of thing a young, overwhelmed mother might do. And then a conversation between Miranda and Charlotte in Abu Dhabi when they're drunk. That was yes, talking about that was the only scene it, that I thought was that really worked. That seemed like a bonding moment that two, again, young mothers might have about how difficult motherhood is. But though, other than those two scenes, quick scenes in a two and a half hour movie, I, none of it seemed authentic. Yeah, that scene, because I've had this discussion with other women who are moms, like that scene's totally pure and mm -hmm. honest. There's some glimmers of honesty with Carrie and Big discussing what, what yeah, kind of marriage I, they want to have. Yeah. But then she's like futzing with her black evening gown the whole time, so that's distracting, whatever. I give it a 2.5, because some of the clothes are fun. Again, a couple scenes that, that worked for me, a couple jokes. You always say you give me. it a horrible grade, and then you say because something you liked. I mean, 2.5 blows. I know it does. <laughs> I, give, I give it a 1.5 out of 4 when I wrote yeah. the review for AP. But 2.5 for our purposes, I mean, yeah, the clothes are fun. But that's it. It made me so angry. People make decisions that made me so angry yeah, in this movie I, that I can't go into because they're, they're spoilers. But 2.5 from me. Matt? I, I, I will appreciate that I could easily understand who the characters were, and I thought there were... Little moments that I thought, okay, you know, like that's, you know, like the scene between Miranda and Charlotte, not no. Natalie. There you go. Or Judy uh, or Blair. Right. <laughs> and I'm actually a little bit higher than you are, a three, because it wasn't as god awful and painful as I was afraid it was going to be. Okay, very quickly, and one thing I do want to discuss before we wrap up the grades, and, and, and no more than 30 seconds total, I thought some of the, uh, the, uh, character, the Muslim characters, some of it have called it anti-Muslim. I think that's a little strong. It did make me a little uncomfortable. I thought the Muslim women in the burqas and then, oh, look at this, we all got the fancy new dresses from the latest fashion lines and the Muslim men seemed out of Hollywood in the 1940s with their subservience to the white Westerners. I don't know, I just thought it was a little uncomfortable. No. At the nope. same time, I mean, Samantha's totally obnoxious when she screams out in the middle of the marketplace, yes, I have sex and I enjoy it. Like, there's such a, an well, ugly American that, flaunting of, like, well, not caring about what their life is like. And my thought know. in that scene is I thought, you know, this girl's going to get stoned to death. Yeah. Right, but I mean, it's like, but Abu Dhabi's a pretty progressive city, and, and like, it was either they were, uh, you know, it was either the new, uh, the new Muslim world or there were, of course, these conservative sort of old school fundamentalists. I don't know the whole thing. It just it was a little. It was not it's handled. It was not handled deftly at the very or least. Delicately. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, let's throw this away. Um, I gave it a. Uh, I can't believe I'm the highest grade here. Uh, it's a sensitive side. I gave it a three point five. Uh, okay. I do care about what happens to the characters, but I don't care anymore. But I've also given it another grade uh, for people who love the show and love the characters, um, and that grade is an 11, <laughs> um, because no one will care. How much money did it make? It made $3 million in the Thursday midnight showings alone. It made $14.2 million on Thursday. They're projecting $75 million for the five-day weekend. Yeah, it's only 14% on the tomato meter, but Fandango released a report saying that going into the weekend, it had sold something like 81% of the tickets sold through their site already, pre-sale tickets. So Percentage of men to women? 96% female. Yeah. So <laughs> there's your solid loyal target so, audience. So right? our overall so have grade. Have a fabulous time. Our <laughs> overall grade, skipping my 11 for the people who are already fans, comes out to a uh, very simply the three from a 3.5, a 2.5, a 3.5. Overall grade is a three. For uh, Sex in the City, two gets a three, and no one will care what we have to say about <laughs> Sex in the City, too. Uh, uh, next week, uh, um, uh, one of the two movies we'll be doing, Get Him to the Greek, uh, which I at least, I think all of us are at least looking forward to. I've already seen it. And so have I. I don't want to give it away. Okay. All right, well, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. They've already seen it. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, what the Flick, youngturks.com, and we'll see you next week.